live up to the legend. But anyway, here we go from Luke Davies for Miss Emma DeClario. But before I read it, isn't this a beautiful show? Yeah. Can we have a round of applause? As her darling dad just said, and it's also very special for me because her darling dad did just curate the last show that was upstairs here. He just said it is such a deep show. And I thought they were beautiful words. Thank you, Don. And now, from Luke Davies. Firstly, as a friend, I love the metaphorical exuberance with which Emma has laid out the journey tonight. Remember That's slowly. slowly. I'm scared. Luke Come here slowly. and help me. No way. Slowly and clearly. Okay, I'll try. And loudly. Come here. No. That journey we must all take, one way or another, through the monochromes of obstacle difficulty and despair, to the abundance of colour which is our eventual destiny. I look for that that is invisible. Emma wrote it in a poem once. She certainly has a knack of looking at in the visible. Secondly, as a fellow traveller on the road of the spirit, I love that Emma has used the Paul Harding quote to frame this beautiful exhibition. Harding to me, seems to be speaking of being open to and present in this extraordinarily unlikely moment, our lives, here. In Emma too, her work constantly aspires to this state of finding her fullness in the thinness. It's a balancing act, but it's what makes her such a beautiful artist. We are all, to intents and purposes, floating selfless, egoless, not even in an ocean of eternal time, but in the void itself. And then suddenly, we are here, and there's a clock ticking. And for most of the world, and most of history, that experience has been like sleepwalking. What true art does is anchor us, and open our eyes to the surroundings. Nietzsche spoke of how the highest possible action we can take in life is to stop becoming with the character of being. And it seems to me that what Emma is always striving to do in her work, she's had a particularly long and winding becoming. But here, in this work, in this room, it's great to see the glow of so much being. Thirdly, as a poet, I'm excited by Emma's affinity with Yeats' magnificent poem, Sailing to Bicentinian which seems to be about the fullness of artistic endeavour, about coming to terms with the passage of time. In Emma's painting, which I've admired and fully coveted for years, do you think you might buy one? <laughs> I'm going to give him one for this bit. There's the same polarity between fullness and urgency, yearning and grace, fecundity and sorrow. It's perhaps what gives her work such a devotional quality. Her father, as most of you know, an artist himself has spoken of her approach to art, coming out of a passionately fierce surety, rendered all the keener by an unmeditated and unashamed tenderness. Did you say that? I can't remember. <laughs> we could just as easily take this as a definition of our Emma's personality. I don't know how well Emma knows Yeats's wider body of work. In his younger work, he reveled in pure energy. But when he was an adult, did he throw away childish things? Well, not exactly. Yeats certainly understood solitude, and as in sailing to Byzantium, he turned open arm to face his own mortality. Nonetheless, he was always determined to fashion form out of the formlessness of life. Such is form as Grecian goldsmiths make of hammered gold and gold enamelling to keep a drowsy emperor awake. Yeats knew that the heart is fastened to a dying animal, but that we can find some kind of permanence in the artifice of eternity. Here's Yeats in my own favourite fragment of work. My 50th year had come and gone. 
I sat, a solitary man, in a crowded London shop, an open book, an empty cup, on the marble table top. While on the shop and street I gazed, my body of a sudden blazed, and twenty minutes more or less, it seemed so great my happiness, that I was blessed and could bless. Here in a nutshell is something of Emma's mythology. This intense solitude, the gathering of creative powers, followed by the observing of the world and then the blazing, that translation of the blessed structure of the world and its transcendent components, among which we're all, for a short time, gathered here tonight. Emma, I wish I could be there. Emma would like me to thank, in no particular order, Anthony Garvey, Christine McKenzie, Peter Sharp, Luke Davies, Matisse Middleman, Luca DeClario Davis, Celeste DeClario Davis, Max Davis, Siobhan Jackson, Lucas Greenhatch, the beautiful Jacqueline Middleman, William Gwine, Siobhan Ryan, I think she got him twice, Jamie Smith, Damien Walsh Howling, Guy Matthews, Irina Agrarana, and Zen Layden. Thank you. Thank you.